All right. Now, now the plaque has even been changed there. It says one and a half million. Well, it wasn't one and a half million. It wasn't even one and a half people. But it, they, he had reduced it to one and a half million. So it was reduced by a number of two and a half million, from four million down to one and a half million. So that two and a half million should come off to six million, but it never does, you see. Sure. Uh, so well, got that. Even in the in the 1990s, there was an article in the New York Times where it was basically down to 73,000, and only about 20,000 of those people who died in Auschwitz were Jewish, and it wasn't it wasn't by gassing because uh, of course the trial, uh, the 1988 trial, uh, proved with uh, with Fred Leuchter that it was not no it was not possible. Right. It was not. It was not possible. And but people, if you say the same thing over and over again, people have a tendency to believe it. And people say, "Oh, conspiracy, conspiracy theories." But but you know, uh, there are no conspiracy theories until you actually take the time to study it, and then you see that virtually everything is a conspiracy because even the place that you work, if a person's working in office, if a woman is working in office, somebody else wants her job. If there's an executive there, somebody else wants his corner office with windows looking out over the city. There's conspiracy all the way down to the smallest thing. So when you've got the resources of the world in contention, there's going to be big, big conspiracies. And for anybody that's so naive to think that there wouldn't be a conspiracy involved there, well, you better take out some books. On my website, A Good News About God, I have a whole reading list, reading list on all sorts of political issues, including the Holocaust. Many books there. Someone who really wants to get informed, they can do it. If they just started reading my website, they could start oh, getting informed. I agree, absolutely. You have so lots anyway, of information there. Right. So anyway, to, to um, in order to bring this off, to rule the world, You've got to have a way to shut people up from investigating uh, the, what the Jews are doing. And that is where the Holocaust comes in. Because they, they first of all, they call you anti-Semitic. Well, as you well know, you can't be anti-Semitic unless there are some Semites around to be against. <laughs> and the Jews are not Semites. They have no relationship. The present-day Jews in the world have no relationship to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're Khazars. Uh, Gentile, Mongol, barbarian Turks who just accepted the religion and culture of Judaism way back in about the 8th century. So these people have no relationship to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In fact, the Palestinians have more Semitic blood in them, so it turns out that the Israelis and the Jews around the world are the most anti-Semitic group on the earth because they hate the Palestinians and are genociding them. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so how does how has all this affected your professional life? Well, you know, as I told you, I've been a truth teller from from way back on medical issues as well as the AIDS issue. And of course, in 1993, I developed cancer, which was uh, diagnosed as terminal. And even though I'm an orthodox doctor and was at the height of academic medicine, I refused chemotherapy, I refused radiation, I refused mastectomy, even though I had a tumor on my chest the size of a softball, and those pictures are on my website at drday.com. I got well by totally natural methods, by changing everything about my life. And so this is also controversial. And so I, now that's what I do. I have a whole series of DVDs and books and all that showing people how they can get well from virtually every disease because not only when I had cancer, before I had cancer, I was before I knew better about medication, I was already on medication for beginning Parkinson's. And I developed uh, symptoms of multiple sclerosis as well. Once I got well from my cancer, all of my symptoms of Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis went away. And that's when I realized it's the way we uh, live, eat, act, um, think, and handle stress that actually causes all disease. And once sure. we change those things, we can get well. And I've been well now. My tumor first appeared 19 years ago, and I'm totally well and cancer-free. I take no medication, never had chemo, never had radiation, and I had a huge tumor. Okay, but, but your Holocaust denial, how is that affected? I, I, well, well, the thing is that when I, when I went up to see Ernst in uh, Canada at Ingrid's request because he was not being well treated in the prison up there, uh, Dr. Dean Ornish 
who is a radio doctor who's never treated a patient in his life. He went right from medical school to being a... And, and I, oh, uh, yeah, I've heard, I, heard of him. Yeah. yeah. Well, he called me a Nazi uh, on, on <laughs> a national, national radio just because I went up and examined Ernst uh, physically. And I testified at his uh, trial in court uh, there about his physical condition, nothing about his beliefs or anything like that, even though I agree 100% with what he believes. But those were not questions I was addressing because I was there only to speak to his physical uh, condition, but I was still called a Nazi. So they, uh, and they call me anti-Semitic, and they call me a bigot, and they call me all sorts of things like that. But, you know, that's nothing new for me. Um, sure. So that, that doesn't really faze me. They, they don't make me into what, you see, the Jews never want to deal with the issues. They always want to try to destroy your credibility and reputation. And so this is their modus operandi. When you say something that's true, they'll never deal with that. They just call you names, which is very cowardly. But they certainly, are cowardly. Certainly. And, and again, I'm not saying that every Jew is a bad person. I'm not ever suggesting that. There are some really good Jews like Myron Fagan and Benjamin Friedman who were also revisionists and who exposed what the Jews were doing. And, and so I'm not saying that, but I'm saying anybody who buys into the Holocaust uh, and doesn't study it out, anybody who uh, believes, uh, any Jew who believes that the Jews have a right to uh, destroy the Palestinians and take over uh, Palestine, I mean, those people are all bad people. Okay? Sure. Sure. So, now, so, now you went up to Canada because uh, Ernst was in jail, and yeah. he was suffering from... The, the abuse, the abusive treatment that he received, they were not feeding him correctly. They were not providing him with adequate uh, uh, blankets. Uh, they weren't providing him with with just humane things that would would keep him comfortable, as they did with the other prisoners. That's right. I mean, they targeted him specifically because of his beliefs, correct? Of course, of course, because, uh, you know, in Canada it's against the law to question the Holocaust. And, uh, you know, Ernst was made out to be this terrible villain when, in fact, it was the Jews who were the terrible villains. They tried to burn his house down, had huge damage to his house. They were hoping he was in it. <clears throat> they sent him at least two pipe bombs trying to kill him. They circulated uh, flyers with his face on it with a... Uh, a, um, uh, a team right over his face to, to shoot him, encouraging people to shoot him. These are all hate things. These are all hate crimes. But, of course, nobody was ever uh, brought to justice for that. Right. And, he was, right. and he was never really given any police protection. And, and the original uh, crime was uh, that he was circulating false news, supposedly, and so that's right. this, was, this was brought about by Serena Sabrina, Sabina Citron, uh, when in fact, when you look at some of the uh, Hollywood productions, now that's false news, and yet, does anybody ever go after these people? Oh, of course like not. Steven Spielberg? They, they, yeah, they, they rule the courts, they rule the city councils, they rule the state, they rule the federal government, not only in Canada, but in the U.S. You know, the Jews took over England. Of course, Canada is a protectorate of uh, England. Certainly. I guess you stop. Okay, we do need to take another three minute break. We will be right back. Welcome back, friends. My guest today is Dr. Lorraine Day. Now, you have some commonality with Ernst Zundel religiously, early religious uh, affiliations. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, both, uh, both Ernst and I were raised Seventh-day Adventists, and in fact, I think his sisters have been Seventh-day Adventist missionaries. Neither one of us are present members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but we have shared, uh, Seventh-day Adventists learn a lot about the Bible when they're growing up, and they learn a lot about uh, Revelation and what's going to happen in the world in the end times, and they also have a, a basic fundamentalist belief in God, and so... Uh, Ernst and I share that. Ernst considers himself to be a Christian, uh, and I, I was an, uh, an agnostic for most of my adult life until I developed cancer, as I told you, and then I realized I knew everything every other doctor knew, and we doctors don't know how to treat cancer. 
So it was it was then that I started turning to not only studying the medical literature more thoroughly than we are allowed to do in me- our medical training, but I also turned to the Bible to look about look at the tenets of health. And Ernst is very interested in health as well because he was raised with this interest in health because the Bible says your body is the temple of God and he that destroys God's temple, him will God destroy. So uh, health is very important. So we do share that as well as a love of truth. And, of course, uh, Ingrid is not a Christian, uh, but she shares a great love of truth and is not uh, at all shy about uh, telling truth, which I think is the characteristic that all three of us share. Right. Uh, now, what do you think he draws his strength from? Do you think it, it is from his, his moral beliefs and his Christianity? I, I, yes. I think it's not only from his moral beliefs and Christianity. He was raised in a Christian home. He was raised with uh, great, uh, I think, confidence and, and self-confidence in that he, he knew truth. And uh, Adventists particularly because they are considered to be different, because they have a greater interest in health, uh, because they um, uh, do study the Bible a lot, because they worship on Saturday rather than Sunday, are considered to be different. And so when you're raised already being considered different, I think it builds a certain amount of strength in you where you are willing to stand up for something that is right uh, when the masses uh, ridicule you. So I think that that is a great benefit, that you can uh, uh, stand being ridiculed. Well, that's and, interesting. That's very yeah. interesting. And, and certainly he has uh, shown a great deal of courage and is right. immovable in, in this fight. I mean, that's this right. has been going on for about three decades. Right. That's right. And that's so, a long time. <laughs> that, that's a long time. But when, when you have the truth and when you know it's the truth, uh, it, you know, it, it, there are a lot of people who are real, will really shy away from the truth because they're more interested in being liked or being a member of the group than telling the truth. Uh, that has never been Earth. That has never been Ingrid. And it's never been me. So, Very good. Uh, yeah. You all come so, from the same class, right? That, <laughs> that's right. That's right. But, you know, we were talking about how important the Holocaust lie is to the Jews because in order to take over the world, they have to find a way to force other countries to give this evil group huge sums of money. And so how were they going to do that? Well, uh, if you have a presumption of guilt for a really a uh, heinous crime, whether it's real or imagined, then you can demand huge reparations. And so they had to come up with this. And as I'm sure you well know, they tried to do the six million lie in World War I. Absolutely. Uh, we do have to take a one-minute top-of-the-hour break. We will be right back for our second hour. Welcome, friends. This is the second hour of Spengola Speaks. This is Deanna Spengola. And my guest today is Dr. Lorraine Day. Her websites are Dr. Day, that's D-A-Y dot com, Dr. Day dot com, and goodnewsaboutgod.com. And if you scroll down on that second website, goodnewsaboutgod.com, uh, then you will find a lot of uh, political truths. Uh, just click and you'll You'll go right down to a lot of articles and videos and all kinds of really, really crucial information. And both of her websites are linked on the radio schedule page. And we will take calls in the second hour after the first break at 800-313-9443. Now, before the First World War, the Zionist movement was predisposed to be pro-German. In fact, Theodore Hurls, uh, was formerly a journalist in Vienna. He was part of the Germanic-speaking world. Some of his first supporters resided in Germany and Austria. Uh, there were in Germany about 600,000 Jewish citizens who were more assimilated and better educated and in superior social standings than Jews in other parts of Eastern Europe. And uh, Germany was the predominant power in German in Europe, and German Jews viewed themselves as the natural leaders of Jewry. 
Uh, additionally, the Jewish aristocrats in America originally came from Germany and maintained cultural loyalties to that nation. Uh, but something happened. When war erupted, the American Jews naturally allied with Germany, but Wilhelm, Kaiser Wilhelm, would not go along with giving Palestine to the Jews. And so Arthur J. Balfour said, and I quote, Germany is expendable, unquote. So the